friends and welcome to the kitchen with the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. My name is Dr. Evelise Capo and today we we're going to be talking about dairy substitutes. For a lot of us, the ingredient or let's say the food that we crave the most from a standard American diet is cheese or you know dairy products. And there's many reasons for that. There's actually substances found in cheese. There's the protein casein and casomorphine, which are, have actually been um, linked to producing this um, reaction in our bodies of addiction. And we're craving these substances, not to mention the fat and the, all the salt that's found in these products. So cas casein and uh, other dairy products have also been linked to other chronic conditions, not only um, cancer, but diabetes, acne, and we have some very great articles to share with you. We'll do that on the description. Um, but today we're talking about the practical side. So how do we do that? We know we have to give it up, uh, but a lot of us find it a little bit hard. So today we're gonna be talking about three of the most uh, commonly consumed products, and that's uh, milk, cheese, and yogurt. So in terms of the milk, um, it's very easy to find non-dairy milks at the, at the supermarkets. Uh, my favorite is oat milk, and this is um, low-fat oat milk. And we have to be diligent about reading those labels because some of them have sugar added or oils, so it's important to do that. There's almond milk, uh, rice, lots of different types of, of non-dairy milks. But you can also make them at home, and we have some recipes on our website we're gonna be making today a very quick and easy oat milk. And it's also more affordable, so if you're looking to save some money, definitely making your own milk is a great choice. So what we have here is a cup of oats that have been um, soaked in some water for about 20, 30 minutes. The recipe says you can soak them um, overnight. Um, but you know, some recipes don't even require that. So depending on how in a rush you are, you don't even have to soak, but I did soak these for about an hour. We're also going to be using uh, some dates. You could also use a little maple syrup, but I'm using some dates to sweeten. So we're going to use our blender here. Whoops. And it has three to four cups of oats, uh, I'm sorry, of water, depending on how thick we want the milk to be. I use four cups just because it makes it a little easier to strain it. And I think it's thick enough. So here's two dates. Optional, some vanilla extract. I'm using about a fourth of a teaspoon. And you can also flavor it with um, some dark cacao, make chocolate um, oat milk. So we're gonna process. 30 seconds to a minute, being careful here. some of the, um, you know, of the solids here from the milk. And you have to be patient, so don't put a lot in at a time. Or don't pour a lot of it at a time or you're gonna end up with spilling milk all over your counter. All right, so you do that. And in a couple minutes, you have oat milk on the other side. Then you wanna refrigerate and keep in your refrigerator for five, five days. All right, so let me put this aside here for a second. So we can use this blender. And you can do the same. You can make it. Oh my goodness, we're excited today. Let me rinse this real quick. So to make this um, oat 
milk, you know, you only need a couple ingredients. So definitely cheaper. All right, for the next recipe, we're actually sharing with you one of Kim Campbell's um, tried and true mac and cheese recipes. I love her recipe. She's our plant pure chef. And this is definitely no exception. It is so easy to make and full of flavor. So to make mac and cheese, all we need is some whole grain noodles. And I'm using gluten-free brown rice pasta today. Um, these are already cooked about 12 ounces. We're gonna use the blender again. So we're gonna use the base of this recipe, which I love to use vegetables in my cheese sauces, um, is butter, butternut squash. So pumpkin or butternut squash, about a cup of that. You can also use um, sweet potato. And then we're gonna use a fourth of a, a cup of cashews, raw cashews. If you wanna uh, omit the nuts, you can also use hemp seeds. I have also played a, a little bit with oats um, using them in place of nuts, and that works really well. Um, all right, so here we have one and a half cups of non-dairy milk, and I'm using the oat milk for this. Then a one-fourth cup of nutritional yeast. We're gonna share this recipe, so don't worry, you don't have to write notes. Um, we're gonna use some Dijon mustard, about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Three fourths of a teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a tablespoon of lemon juice, pure uh, freshly squeezed lemon juice, salt and pepper, and cornstarch. Need about two uh, tablespoons. That's right, of cornstarch. Put it all in here, and let's blend this. some turmeric to your sauce but I think actually the color in this one is great just heat that up and bring it to a boil until it's thickened enough for you all right so while that um, comes to a boil I'm gonna rinse this for our next recipe very quickly still one more minute now this is a baked mac and cheese recipe if you're in a hurry you can definitely just make the cheese sauce and add it to your pasta and you're set to go and add whatever vegetables you like um, sometimes um, my favorites are mushrooms she also suggests peas or and, and or steamed vegetables that's another great one. All right, so let's assume our sauce is ready to go, and then we're gonna pour it here over the casserole with our noodles. How easy is that? Now batch cooking always saves my life because if you have meals in your refrigerator that are prepared that you just have to warm up, you save time and, so that's important. Unless you make power bowls every day, which you can, but again, batch cooking. All right, so we're gonna stir, make sure it's well incorporated in here. 
<laughs> there we go. Okay, so somebody said, wish we had oat milk where I live. Okay, yeah, so you can definitely make your own. It's not hard at all. And you can flavor it. So if you, you know, if you want to add some chocolate or even some berries, I saw um, a note there, somebody added berries to their milk. Okay, so finally, before we bake, we're going to add some uh, breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs. And I'm using, oh, there's a little bit here that needs to be better. Not doing a great job incorporating the sauce here. So now I want to add some uh, breadcrumbs right on top. Now, um, Kim says you can add the veggies now before you bake. If I added mushrooms, I would add them now, but for steamed vegetables, or from sorry, for other vegetables like peas and, and broccoli, I like to uh, steam them separately and add them right at the end. All right, so after baking at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 30 minutes, we end up with this. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so as you can see, I steamed the um, broccoli afterwards and we'll also serve it with some peas. Quick and easy, we've got two. Now for the third recipe. And this is one of my girls' favorite. It's their dessert. So here we're gonna make some yogurt. And actually I'm cheating a little bit because I'm, I'm buying the yogurt, the cashew-based yogurt that's already prepared, but the key here is unsweetened. So there's a variety of different yogurts out there. There's cashew, almond-based, soy-based, even I think I saw oat-based, but a lot of times they'll have sugar and you know lots of ingredients and we want to omit that. So the way to go is to uh, buy the unsweetened and then flavor it yourself. I love strawberries, one of my favorite fruits. So I'm going to make some strawberry yogurt with the unsweetened yogurt. So we're going to blend all this here in the blender. This is about six ounces. And next we add two dates. I don't like it too sweet. So two days is plenty. And then optional, about a tablespoon of fruit sweetened preserves. And that's optional. You can just do the fruit and the um, dates, dates and the strawberries. And we have a, a cup of strawberries. And then we blend. Now these strawberries, um, have been thought out for a little bit, about half an hour. And that's it. Now, if you want to make frozen yogurt, which is so popular nowadays, you can use the uh, frozen strawberries and then just put it back in the freezer for a little while. And, that, and there you go, frozen, frozen yogurt. And you can use mango, use whatever fruit you like, and you can also use fresh fruit. I just use frozen because it's always available, it's handy, and sometimes it's more affordable. The three main used dairy, dairy product substitutes. So we have, we have oat milk, we have our mac and cheese, as well as our strawberry yogurt. We're gonna be talking about dairy in other videos, so stay tuned. And also check uh, the links for the articles that we're gonna have in the description. Thank you so much and have a great day.